Hi everyone, this is Zach with Online ADA, and I got to tell you, I'm really excited for this video today. Uh, we're going to be doing a quick demonstration how it works for our newest version of the accessibility suite for WordPress. This is version 2.0 of the plugin. Uh, just came out. It's getting really wonderful feedback from our customers, and I'm happy to share it with you. So this is going to be a relatively short video where I'm going to run through how the plugin works and the value it's going to bring to you. Now, for anybody who's started in digital accessibility, you know that um, while the work to make your website digitally accessible is not necessarily difficult from a skill required perspective, but it is tedious and exhaustive. There are so many little nuances and things. And the real value that our plugin will bring to you is the incredible time savings that it will provide you over, uh, frankly, any, any alternative in the market. And so we've got a demo site spun up here, and we're going to use this as our baseline. And so once you install the plugin, you'll get your accessibility tab down here with a bunch of helpful little things. Um, under license is where you'll enter your license key and activate your plugin. Um, under Get Certified, links out to our brand Online ADA, where we actually provide independent third-party site audits and remediations and verification or certification of accessibility compliance. That might be something that is of inter interest to you. Um, and a great place to start once you install the plugin is under Getting Started. <clears throat> This page is going to have some information that's going to help you understand how to make the most out of the plugin, all written in plain English, lay terms. It's going to be a really great resource to you. Now, when it actually comes to doing compliance work, you'll start here under Start Scan. And so I'll, I'll show you what this looks like. The scan gets a name. You can call it, you can override this and call it whatever you want. <clears throat> Under scan information, it's telling you what it's about to do. And then we have some scan options. And the first thing is it's going to ask you whether or not you want to scan your query strings or just your basic pages. Most people just click yes. That basically means it's going to scan your entire site, even pages that are generated by query strings. And then secondly is the colorblind report. This is something I'm really proud of and I think something you'll get great use out of. It does take a couple extra minutes to generate. And so for the purpose of this demonstration, I've already created one <clears throat> and I have it ready for you. And so we're gonna start there. But um, before I go there, you can set automated scans. So you're doing continual maintenance to improve your site's accessibility. You could do a one-time scan. And when you're ready, you simply click Start Scan. It's going to take you to this progress page that explains to you how things are working, where they're at in the process. We give a approximate time to completion. This far right column is going to tell you the progress. See, we're at the number of pages scanned. <clears throat> now, while that's working in the background, and it's going to take just a minute or two, I'd like to show you the color blindness report. And this is a great new feature of the plugin, something that we didn't have before. This is going to be a great resource to your design and development teams. We actually generate a PDF document, and here it is, that shows uh, your home page. And what this does is it shows you, it emulates what people with varying degrees or types of colorblindness may see when they come to your website. <clears throat> And so this is a really wonderful user interface test where you can really dig in and play with this and see what your pages look like to people with varying degrees of colorblindness. And I think you're going to find this is just a wonderful tool. I'm going to scan back now to our, to our accessibility scan. <clears throat> and in the nature of saving time, I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to wait for this to load because we'll be here for another minute or two. I'm going to go down to the tab called Scan Results. This shows a chronological timeline of all of the scans that I've done um, while the plugin's been enabled. And you'll see here, this is the one I just started. It's about halfway done. Uh, but earlier today, I did one 
just as a demonstration. So we're going to click on this. Okay, give the page a second to load. This is what your scan results will look like. This is going to be where you can start taking action and making your website more accessible. So I have a current scan going in the background, so it's showing me that with an alert um, screenshot from my home page. We have an internal scoring matrix that just gives you some ideas of how closely compliant your website is. There's the URL that we're testing. A summary box <clears throat> of non-compliant pages. And then this plugin is referencing the old 508 requirements. And then, of course, the ones that really matter in today's landscape, WCAG Level A, WCAG Level AA, and then related to all of these, but we kind of treat as its own, are color contrast issues. Okay. Now, first thing I want to explain is the difference between an error and a warning. An error is like, it's something that is bona fide, absolutely out of compliance, that needs to be addressed. Whereas warnings are things that might be, and they need to be checked out. And so we flag them for you so you can go take corrective action. Okay, so that's the difference there. Now, if I were to have generated a color blindness report, I would have clicked to download it here. That's that report that takes a couple extra minutes because we're actually taking screenshots of your website and then running it through color blindness filters to get you that PDF. Okay. Also, as soon as you run the scan, you can download a CSV of your results. Now what we found is a lot of our agency friends and, and development teams love this list because, here's an example, um, it breaks down errors by page, by section, we give the actual, we, we flag the actual code that needs to be reviewed, and then in the far column, we actually give you some ver verbiage from the WCAG checklist, <clears throat> letting you know what needs to be done. So this is a really, really wonderful resource. And then now we actually get into the meat and potatoes. I can view my errors and warnings by page. And you can see down here are the all of the pages that have been flagged with issues. And we did overkill on this as a test, so we have a lot of issues so that you can see them in the demonstration. Okay. You can view errors by object. So this is just another way of looking at the same set of data, but you may enjoy this better. So you can see forms that are flagged or images or audio or video or iframes or embeds or tables. All of it is organized by object. And then finally, site updates. Of course, a big part of ongoing compliance is making sure that the appropriate images have the appropriate alt text descriptions. And so you can actually do that right here. We have a number of invalid images on this test site that are missing alt text where you can add your alternative text right here. Also, you could mark an image as decorative. And that's important because how we interpret the regulations is that if an image is solely decorative, meaning it plays no vital role in the storytelling of the content that's on the page, then that image might be and probably will be a waste of time to describe to someone with a visual impairment if it if it does nothing other than just as kind of fluff and buff because um, that's just going to waste time in the screen reading software so you can mark it as decorative and not worrying about giving it alt text once you do your work here you can come down and click save and continue you can toggle to see valid images i think this is a really great feature so you can see images below that are fine that we've marked either as decorative or that we've added alt text to up here and clicked save so you'll still get a running commentary of the images that you've addressed okay now the next part of this is actually looking at some of the more complex issues of compliance so that you can see what's going on we're going to view by object and let's look at color contrast this is another feature that I'm really, really proud of. We have built a mechanism that scans the color contrast of your website wherever text is present, and it measures the color contrast of the background color versus your text color. Because of course, as you know, text with background needs to have a certain color contrast ratio to be considered accessible compliant. Now, just a disclosure, if you have text baked into an image file, 
you're going to need to manually review that on your own and make sure that there's uh, color contrast. And really, you should probably not have text baked into an image because that doesn't help with screen readers. But um, So I'm going to open my contrast tab. And you'll see here, we outline all of the contrast issues that we have found on the website. Okay. Now, the next question naturally is, what do you do with that data? And I'm going to show you um, the action that you can take. Okay. So I'm going to toggle back to viewing my results by page. And uh, here's a here's a page C blocks that's short for content blocks we see all the issues that we've flagged and so how we how we set this up is every section here like one two three are the flagged issues firstly you'll know if it's an error or a warning if it's 508 WCAG level A WCAG level double A or contrast and then you get the warning of what needs to be looked at and then we actually grab the code that it's relevant to so that you can see that and take action. This is the re requirement that needs to be met. And so if you, when you click on this, you can learn more about this issue by clicking the little thought bubble. And it's going to open up a new tab. And here it is, 131. Information structure and relationships conveyed through presentation can be programmatically determined or are available in text. And so this is actually coming right from the guidelines tab of our plugin. And these are the actual WCAG accessibility requirements. Okay. Let's go down to see if we can find a color contrast issue. So this little guy right here represents color contrast. Okay. So we've found and flagged an area on the page C blocks that has a color contrast issue. So here's the error. This gives you some information about the ratio that must be met. The color contrast ratio must be 4.5 to 1. The current ratio is close, but not good enough. It's 4.44 to 1. So we identify what the font size is. We identify what the font or text color is. And we identify for you what the background color is. And then we go one step further and we actually kind of mock up what that is looking like on your actual web page. And so you can take this right to your designer or right to your developer and say, hey, we have colors here that are not at a strong enough ratio. Here are the color numbers. And then your production team can very easily just make a small adjustment to the color to meet that magical uh, 4.5 to 1 color ratio okay so as you can see this is going to be a huge time savings for you over trying to manually identify these things okay now again uh, the average website probably isn't going to have a thousand color contrast issues I mean maybe it will but it's that's going to be unusual or rare I should say but we did that just to show you in this demonstration the power of the plugin Another thing you can do down here in the results is you can omit certain kinds of results. Um, so if all you want to look at right now are color contrast issues, you can just omit the others from your results and just focus on color contrast or vice versa. You can do that to any of the others. Okay. So just a quick recap of where we're at so far. We've looked at how the plugin works, what the user interface looks like, how to understand what these warnings and errors are. We've looked at the color blindness report so that you can see what people with varying degrees of color blindness might be seeing. We've taken a look at the CSV export of results, which you can then use to generate proposals or estimates for your customers or your, your internal team. Okay. Um, we've taken a look at, you can see the guidelines here and how you need to meet them. We've taken a look at look your scan results. We've taken a look at starting a scan, scheduling a scan every month or at time intervals. Okay. One thing we haven't looked at yet is the sitemap. The scan is based on a sitemap. It's going to scan the pages and posts that are in the sitemap. So I can review my existing sitemap 
And I could even opt to add a page right here to my sitemap so that it will get scanned at a future scan. Or I could also remove pages. Maybe there are pages that I'm not worried about being compliant because maybe technically they're a private or hidden page that an end user would never find. And so you could omit that page and then you could save your sitemap. Okay. You could also upload a new sitemap using any one of these formats or the plugin will actually generate a sitemap for you. It's, it's all your preference and that's where it's, that's where it's managed. Okay. Um, and then one thing I want to end with, we'll go back to our scan results, look at the scan we were looking at a few minutes ago. One thing I want to stress is that this plugin is a tool at the end of the day. Now it's a very powerful tool and it is saving people across the world a ton of time when it comes to making their site compliant and then maintaining that compliance over time. Okay. Um, but one thing to remember it is, it is just a tool and, um, the plugin itself does not say guarantee or certify or promise that your website is absolutely compliant. Now the scoring matrix that we give you does give you a good idea of where you're at. Um, and that's going to give you a good reference point. But if you want the ultimate peace of mind to have an independent third party verify that your site is meeting compliance, make sure to click get certified and go over to our other website online ADA to learn more about our auditing and certification services that are very effective and very affordable. So again, this is Zach with Online ADA. I really appreciate your time today, and we look forward to working with you. Bye-bye.